Welcome to the Grumpy Old Lyman Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Thomas. I'm Mitchell Schwartz. And we are grumpy this week because it is Super Bowl week and neither one of us is playing there. However, one of the two of us, and we'll see if you at home that are playing along can figure out which one of it is, one of us played in the Super Bowl for Andy Reid just three years ago. And uh, without doing too many spoilers here, Mitch, why don't you just lean right into it and let us know the beginning of this week for you guys when you were playing for Andy Reid and the Chiefs getting ready for that Super Bowl. What was that like and what was the message that Andy Reid was giving to the team early on in the week? The biggest message is try to stay focused on the task at hand. You know, it, it's really easy to get distracted. You have more media obligations than normal. I would actually say the week isn't that dissimilar from what a normal week looks like. It's just mm -hmm. different. Um, and then obviously towards the end of the week, friends, family, all sorts of people come to town. There's parties, there's things you're getting pulled in every direction. You're the hottest ticket in town. Um, although there is the waste management golf tournament. So it's a <laughs> double duty in Phoenix this week. Um, but I mean, we saw on social media, both teams flew in uh, on Sunday. And your first thing is Monday. You, you probably practice. So we practice on Monday. Uh, it was in Miami. It was, you know, like 75, 80 degrees, humid. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, man, it's so hot. I am. <laughs> um, and, you know, in a normal work week, you don't practice on Monday. Like if, yeah. if you come in on Monday, you know, Coach Reed's a Monday off guy, actually. So you wouldn't come mm -hmm. until Tuesday. And so if you do come in on Monday, you get a little bit of a lift, a little bit of maybe some running, flush the body, watch the film from the previous day. Well, no, you land on Sunday, Monday, you get right to a practice. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those 10, 10, 10 practices, which for people that don't know what that means, it means you kind of apportion equal amounts of time to offense, defense and special teams. So 10 minutes or 10 plays, depending on how your coach does it uh, for offense and 10 minutes for defense, 10 minutes for special teams. And you have a few rounds of that and everything gets hit and it's a little bit lower tempo. You know, you're probably just wearing the helmets um, and for that specific reason, it's because you flew in the previous day. You want to kind of stay loose. You want to uh, get the body feeling better after a plane flight. You want to make sure that the coaching points from the previous week, as we talked last week, you know, it's not a week off. You're definitely doing some game planning. Uh, you want to kind of go through those on the field and get used to them. And then Monday night was media night. And it was a fun experience, honestly. I, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. You know, they kind of set you up with your own little seating area. And it, the hour flies by. I mean, you're getting peppered questions all over there's a bunch of people they kind of just walk up they wait in line they ask questions some of them are good questions some of them are awful questions um but it goes pretty quick because you have fun with it and um and then through the remaining of the week you know it, it gets back to like i said a more normal uh work week schedule the difference is you know you're either practicing in the morning or in the afternoon it kind of depends on the media availability and which team gets to choose that and so in a normal work week, pretty much standard throughout the NFL, you know, you start on Wednesday, you go in Wednesday morning, you do install, you meet for three or four hours, you do a walkthrough, you have lunch, you go practice, you shower, you meet after, and that's boilerplate Wednesday for everybody in the NFL. But Super Bowl week, it's not quite that. You know, if you have a morning practice on Wednesday, you know, we woke up, we had breakfast. You probably have a little bit of meetings. You meet with the media for like 45 minutes or an hour in your hotel. You take a 30 minute bus ride to the facility. You get dressed, you get ready for practice, and then they uh, get you back on the bus really quickly after practice, which can lead to some very unsanitary and unhygienic oh. uh, teammates who, oh. you know, push the boundaries on what is okay on a, on a team bus. Oh. Um, yeah. So that's, that's honestly the worst part of the week is, is guys who don't like to shower after practice and take that shower pill. Um, mm. You try to shame them as best you can, but you know you can only do that so much so yeah it's it's staying focused on the task at hand because the work is similar the schedule is just different than what you're used to and within that comes more media and you know when you talk about distractions what's a distraction for a, an nfl player a distraction is when media wants to talk to you and you get asked a lot of questions about something that you don't necessarily want to talk about um you kind of get bored of how good is the philadelphia defensive line to talk to me about the matchup with this on reddick like that's not a true distraction, but Super Bowl week, you know, people ask questions that are kind of out of the scope of what's normal. And so the feeling as a player is you're required to do a lot more media than normal and you get asked questions that you're not necessarily used to. And so that's what is, quote unquote, a distraction on Super Bowl week. So working through that and like I said, kind of the message for the week, um, we're here for a mission. It's to win the Super Bowl. I want you guys to have fun. I want you to enjoy the experience, but don't forget why we're here and how important this task is. 
I always tell people that one of the underrated parts of being a head coach is coming up with a schedule that works for your team and your staff and then being able to sell it to your team and your staff as why this is an advantage for you. And, you know, there's always little nuances, but for the most part, head coaches lean on the other coaches in the NFL that have the experience that have been there. Obviously, Andy Reid's been to the Super Bowl plenty of times, so he's got his own way of doing it. And it's the other coaches that are going to be there that are going to lean on Andy Reid someday about what he did, what he would do differently. But what do you think maybe Andy Reid does that's a little bit different from a lot of the other teams that go to the Super Bowl? Well, I can tell you in terms of preparation for game day itself, we went over like pregame and halftime almost every single day. Mm -hmm. And he talked about it over and over and over. He's like, you guys are going to take the field. We're going to have like 20 to 25 minutes before kickoff starts. This is going to be so different from normal. You know, normally if you're the visiting team, you take the field maybe 10 minutes before kickoff. If you're the home team, you take it seven or eight minutes. You kind of go out there. You guys go off to the corner. They do a little bit of a prayer. Guys kind of go in different directions, stay warm. Some just go sit on the bench because they're already ready to go. You do the coin flip. You figure out which team gets the ball, and you go play football. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty quick. Um, but for the Super Bowl, because there's so much going on, there's so much hoopla. I think there's two different anthems. There's a flyover. There's all sorts <laughs> of things that <laughs> there's all sorts of things that you do. Um, like the Olympics. Exactly. They play so the anthem you, for every country of everybody who's playing in the game. <laughs> Yeah, so you get on the field and again, there's 20, 25 minutes. And yeah. if you're kind of into your normal routine, you're like ready to go when you leave the tunnel. It's super exciting. You're running onto the field for the Super Bowl. But it's like, do you keep up that intensity for the 20, 25 minutes? So coach, every, like I said, every single day, he was like, all right, we're going to go onto the field. I want everybody seated on the bench. You guys are all going to go sit down and like, we'll tell you when you can get up and you can warm up. And mm -hmm. so his biggest thing is he didn't want us wasting that energy. He didn't want kind of that nervous or anxious or excitement um, to bleed into our performance in a negative way. You know, he wanted us to stay as fresh as possible and leaning on his previous experience. And I'm sure what his guys did, but also, like you said, talking to other coaches and what other teams have done. That was one of his biggest things. And like I said, the second was halftime. You know, we all know as spectators that Super Bowl halftime was a big event and they bring in a musical act and, you know, a normal NFL halftime is about 12 or 13 minutes and that thing flies by. By the time you get back to the locker room, you sit down, you maybe go to the bathroom. Uh, you know, we heard Peyton Manning a couple of weeks ago talk about, you know, you eat your orange. Uh, the coaches come in, they say, we're running these plays. This is maybe one or two things that we didn't see from uh, scouting that they did against us. And this is how we're going to attack them. And there's not, like he said, those huge wholesale changes. And then you just go take the field, like time's up and it's time to go back on the field. But in the Super Bowl, you have like 30 minutes or 32 minutes and it's such a long halftime. And so coach broke it down into different five minute segments like first five minutes go to the bathroom sit down have a snack next five we're going to come in we'll talk about what we saw in the first half you know next five you got your own you know free time to do what you want then we're gonna um you know bring the coaches back we're going to talk a little bit about what's upcoming in the second half and then the strength coach is going to lead you in a bit of a warm-up and then we're going to take the field and then you still got five minutes and so you know he's he's talking through all these logistics and I always thought it was really interesting that he put so much emphasis on those different time periods because you talk about um, what's different for the actual game itself. It's it is the timing of it. I mean, it's the biggest game. The the nervousness is going to be up. The energy is going to be up. But the flow of what you're used to in every other NFL game, preseason, regular season, postseason, it's different because there's just more time on the field. And so I thought it was really kind of fun and cool that he put so much emphasis on what the 20 minutes look like before the game and what those 25, 30 minutes look like at halftime. And obviously it paid dividends. We came out on top. We had a good second half and we were able to, you know, take the lead and win it. So clearly you think that Coach Reed's emphasis on the different schedules and different flow in the Super Bowl gave you guys a little bit of an advantage. Is it difficult as a player with all that extra time to not just let your mind wander and start to think about like the bigness of this game and like what happens if we win? What happens if we lose? What happens if I screw it up? Like, how do you keep your mind focused when you're going through those extended stretches that you don't normally get in a regular game? Well, it is a little bit difficult. And as someone who <laughs> thinks about those negative things and dwells yeah. on them, you know, I've had I've a few tried. conversations with you. I know how nervous you used to get. <laughs> Yeah. So what I tried to do, I mean, I don't remember how much I did it in Cleveland, but I definitely got more into it in Kansas City is I would just try to visualize, kind of um, close my eyes a little bit and 
sit, you know, in my locker, sit on the bench and just kind of see myself. All right, I'm blocking, you know, Eric Armstead and D Ford. Um, it's first and 10. We're going to run a play action. You know, their base defensive front. I'm probably going to see Armstead at the end. Uh, he's a strong guy. He likes to take on, you know, play action with power. So I'm going to visualize myself, you know, going aggressive, grabbing him, how he's going to react. So I would kind of go through those uh, mechanisms. And the idea there is one, it, it kind of takes your mind off of going to a negative place. You know, you're able to kind of control the narrative. And the second part is you can see yourself do the thing successfully. You know, that's a recreation or a, rather a creation of your choice. And so you can watch yourself use good technique. You can watch yourself be efficient. You can watch yourself um, counter a guy and see all his moves. And again, third and 12, I'm going to see D forward. Okay, I'm going to visualize that get off. I'm going to visualize, all right, my shoulders are open. He might try to sink that rip move, how I can make sure I set in a way to not do that. And so I would try to kind of visualize positive outcomes and um, mostly, you know, I mentioned a third and 12 pass pro and a first down play action. Those are two of the scariest uh, plays for an offensive tackle. And so, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be visualizing a double team on a B block on the backside of yeah. inside zone. Check. Uh, yeah. So you know, that, that, that's where I would go. But for other guys who don't get nervous, who don't get anxious, you know, it's controlling that excitement. They're just so ready. They're so fired up. They're they're yeah. so ready to go. It's again, sit on the bench. We'll tell you when you can kind of get your your engine uh, completely revved up, and we're gonna unleash you and let you go. So uh, it is a little bit difficult. You know, coach brought in different people throughout the week to kind of talk about their experience. You know, we heard from Jimmy Johnson. We heard from mm -hmm. I think Donovan McNabb. We heard from Brett Favre. You know, all these kind of legends in, in football history, and they're giving their experiences and. You know, from Jimmy and Brad, they had positive experiences and Donovan obviously had a negative one not winning it. And so you're able to kind of get all sides and you're able to hear this is what we did. This is what I like that we did and it worked for us. This is maybe what didn't work for us or this is something that I wish I had done. Um, and so as much as you can, you try to soak all that in and you do almost lean into the fact that it is a different game and it is a bigger game. And so your preparation has to uh, accommodate that. You know, if you try to leave it as normal as possible, like the game is so different and the stakes are so much different um, that you might let one or two things slide. And as we know, the margins are so thin in the NFL, you can't let anything slide. I'm doing some of the Super Bowl pregame show for the NFL Network this year. And, you know, there's like 10 hours of pregame and <laughs> Throughout the week, it's just nonstop Super Bowl coverage. And one of the things you hear people talk about a lot is the experience of some of the players that are in the game. You know, they they were here three years ago when the Chiefs were here. And then when last time the Eagles won it with Nick Foles as quarterback, there were several of the guys on the Eagles roster that were there. So both sides have players that are experienced. You know, how much does that really play into actually when you have to go out and play the game on Sunday, having guys that have been there before, have done it before, that can speak to you during the week, during the week of preparation, but then also maybe for the inexperienced guys, how much can they lean on them and gain from that on Sunday on game day? So I actually think it is a big advantage to have people mm -hmm. that have been there and have gone through what those two weeks looks like. Um, when we played San Francisco, our left guard was Stefan Wisniewski, who played on the Eagles on the Nick Foles Super Bowl. And mm -hmm. so one of his biggest things was don't get bored. This is going to be a gruel, <laughs> uh, grueling two weeks. This is going to be monotonous yeah. because, you know, last week, like I said, it's not last week wasn't a bye week. Last week was a work yeah. week. You're doing your full install. You know, you're kind of doing you're assuming the game Sunday and then Sunday you travel to the Super Bowl. And now you've got you know, a week of normal football practice. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this show, Monday is also a practice. You got like a bonus practice. You got a bonus day on Tuesday where you're doing stuff. And so you're watching the same cutups over and over and over. You're installing the same plays over and over and over. And it can get boring in a normal week. The, the 18th time you install, you know, 94 gut, like, yeah, I get it. It's inside zone. I'm just going to hand it off. I'm going to double team. We've before. <laughs> yeah. So now imagine doing that for the fifth time in a two week span against the yeah. same defense against, you know, watching the same clips that you've seen. Cause you know, as we know, the coaches use the same four or five week cut up. Um, mm -hmm. And so Wiz's biggest thing for us individually as offensive linemen was, you know, still take notes, try to make it as fresh as possible. Try not to get bored, try to see it with fresh eyes. And that was really good perspective. You know, if we didn't have that in the room, I mean, it was coach Hex's first Super Bowl experience. It was all of our first Super Bowl experience. 
it would have been a little bit easier to get bored and to kind of let that take in. But Wiz had wise words. And like I just talked about, I mean, Coach Reed's experience and understanding the logistics of how to treat game day, you know, I think that is important. Um, and so in this particular matchup, obviously Kansas City, I would say, has a lot more Super Bowl experience. You know, Philly has a few less guys who went there and played. And now some of those are offensive linemen and they're really important members. And so that's that's good leadership to have. Um, you know, obviously Sirianni is a first time head coach, uh, has not been to a Super Bowl as a head coach. Um, but I do think they have an advantage. You know, Jalen, as much as we want to talk about, you know, Alabama and college and all that, like he played in really important games in college. And yeah, it's not the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's not the NFL. But having some sort of championship experience where it's the most important game of the league that you're in, I, I think that does benefit him. And I don't think he's going to go in there thinking like, oh, man, it's I'm going to be nervous. It's the Super Bowl. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Like he's played in other big games before. And I think that's going to have some benefit. So to your question, you know, is it a benefit to have people around who have experienced the Super Bowl before? Uh, I think it is. And, you know, I think this is relatively even in that capacity, but, you know, Kansas City probably has a bit of an edge. Yeah, Jalen Hurts seems cool as a cucumber and certainly having that big game experience where you're the quarterback, so you know all eyes are always going to be on you and playing in some of the biggest atmospheres in college football. Well, it's not the Super Bowl, however – you're used to being in those pressure situations and you've already worked through how I can control my mind and focus on my job and not allow my mind to think this is bigger than it really is. It's as big as it gets in your sport. However, how you focus on that is you just think about what is my job and you come back to my job doesn't change whether it's the Super Bowl or whether it's the first preseason game. And I think Jalen Hurts seems to have that mind control and that uh, ability to kind of reflect in the moment and keep things, keep the main things the main thing. Um, one thing I'm really curious about, and this is a, one of the only times during the NFL season where you see sometimes teams will make wholesale changes to how they schematically do things. And I think specifically to the Patriots, they're really famous for maybe taking their goal line defense all year. They were a six, two, and all of a sudden they're going to play a five, three, because you have an extra week of preparation. Um, and why not change things? Why not make it difficult? If it's easy on us and it's hard on them, let's try it. And from the coaching staff perspective, how much time do they spend chasing ghosts in this two week period between the conference championship game and the Super Bowl? And how much time do you guys go through the what if game about like, all right, well, hey, we've always seen them in short yardage. They're always playing a 53, but maybe they're going to come out in a 6 1 and they're going to blitz the safeties. Like just playing off of stuff that you've never seen on film, but you're just trying to get ready in case they do something like that. So, you know, depending on the coach, you can definitely go down that path. You know, I think <laughs> the stories of Sean McVay with the Rams is, you know, he had too much time against New England and, you know, kind of burned himself out and thought too much. And, you know, I think he had a lot of regrets coming out of that two week period of how he prepared and, you know, what he did offensively to prepare that team. You know, I was actually surprised, like I talked about, it's kind of two uh, install weeks back to back. I was surprised how much of the install carried over and how much mm. we actually didn't change. Yeah. Um, you know, the coaches kind of created their game plan and, that was pretty much the game plan. You know, you had a couple tweaks here and there that maybe, yeah. you know, some fresh eyes a, a week after. Eh, you know, in this coverage, if we're in a two-by-two two formation and we motion a guy, you know, they're going to back the corner off and maybe that opens up a little bit of a screen for us over here. You change small things like that, but, you know, a smart coach just trusts himself. He trusts his preparation. You know, he sees things and installs them the first time, and that's kind of what sticks. I think the thing with New England – uh, and how they were kind of shapeshifters and they could change what they were doing for a particular week. I don't think it's like, all right, it's the Super Bowl week and we're going to change everything and we're going to install stuff in one week and this is how it's going to be. I think for them, they did all that in training camp. And so it was more relearning what they've already learned in training camp. And yeah, we might not have used it since week four. We might not have used it since week three of the preseason and we were going against our own guys. But it's not completely new stuff. I think as a coach, you'd be doing your player a huge disservice in the biggest game of the year to yeah. change what he's doing wholesale. And the rules are different. The feeling's different. The technique's different. If you haven't been through something, you know, past a, a practice scenario, it's probably going to feel uncomfortable body-wise. And so 
that that was kind of the genius i think of um when we talk about the the belichick scheme and how they can shape shift and change wholesale is i don't think they're changing wholesale week to week without having done it in training camp and so i'd imagine they're getting you know the the vast majority of all schemes you can run in training camp and the, the other advantage for a coaching staff is you can see what your guys are good at you know if you're so used to running a specific scheme and you kind of try to force your guys into that scheme you can determine whether the players fit your scheme but you're not necessarily determining what the best scheme is for the players and so i think that's where uh, an advanced coaching staff uh, would have an advantage um, having practiced kind of all the different things and being able to pick and choose something that maybe a team hasn't seen in uh, a calendar season of film 